Hello, welcome to Shad Life. I'm going to start a new playlist category that isn't going to be necessarily related to biking. Although biking was such a huge part of my life, there's probably no way that I could have this category without talking about biking. Um, I talked to a lot of um, people about how BMX saved my life, and I truly believe that. Um, so this particular section is going to be my journey, um, and I'm pretty sure that's how I'll label it in, in the playlist. Um, and it's going to be about from when I was a kid and a series of videos um, about many different things that I've gone through in my life. Um, some of you probably know if you've been following my channel, I'm sober, been sober six and a half years. Um, but I also want to talk about the other side of that. Um, a lot of times people call uh, people like me double winners, right? Um, that's somebody who is an addict and it's also somebody who has been affected by addicts. People that are affected by addicts um, are people who have had family members, uh, partners, spouses, whatever you want to refer to them as, um, or friends, friends, family, partners, whatever, that have had addiction and you've lived with them or had your life affected by their addiction. Um, the common term that's used is codependency. Um, and codependents tend to think that they can control other people's behaviors, control other people's situations um, to try to, you know, m help them be sober or whatever. And they really sacrifice themselves for somebody else and things like that. That's basically what codependency is. High level definition, not <laughs> super refined is kind of what's popping off my head. Um, there'll be a lot more of that because my addiction side, A, I pretty much six and a half years ago just quit cold turkey because I just came to this moment through my own spiritual work and energy connection with the universe. I am not religious, but I definitely have some spiritual aspects of my life. Um, and that day where I quit, I just was like, why am I doing this? And I just quit drinking. And that was it. And yes, drinking was a problem in my life, but if I think of addiction and alcoholism and a scale, you have these people way over here who are just like, they, they start drinking, they can't stop, they end up getting wasted, passed out, they do it almost daily, things like that. I was more in this gray area where I drank almost every day. But I had like a beer or two, or yeah, definitely not just one beer, like two, maybe three would throw out an evening after work because it was what I used to relax, right? And it was my way of, I just worked a really hard day. Now I'm going to come home and have a beer to, to relax, right? Um, I just got done with this big, long, gnarly bike ride and all my buddies rode and we're going to meet in the parking lot and have some beer, right? That kind of drinker. But I did it all the time. Um, and it was not healthy for me, uh, neither mentally or physically. So I'm glad I quit and um, moved on from that. S s where my life has been more affected is by other people's addiction in my life. Um, some family members, a good friend of mine, my childhood friend of mine, um, a past partner of mine, and things like that. Um, and my 
behavior, my self-care, all that stuff was severely affected by that because I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to cope <laughs> with the person's addiction. Um, so that's what this journey is going to be about, but it's also, it's going to go back to when I was a kid and, and how did BMX save my life, right? Like, what was it about BMX that saved my life? Well, <laughs> I'm going to have a video about that, very specific uh, video. And then I'll have other videos of different phases of my life. And some of it will have some biking history in it and things like that. Um, part of my journey is my biking. Um, I started out as BMX. I got into mountain biking and I did mountain biking and BMX pretty much from that day forward, because I still do mountain biking and BMX, right? Um, got into doing some gravel stuff in the 2000s and ended up liking it and, you know, things like that. Um, never really been a road biker, but now I definitely go do commuting and some road rides. I go on some group rides and stuff, but, uh, you know, I don't know where that will go. Maybe as I get older, I'll find that as something more easier for me to do I don't know but you know my journey is ongoing <laughs> it's going to continue um, but if we really come full circle BMX BMX is in my soul it is that, what I'm grounded in everything I do who I am as a person all revolves around my BMX and and being having been a BMX rider culturally and everything. I don't know how else to explain it, but if you think of like a skater or a surfer or something like that, I'm a BMXer in my heart. And I hope that I can ride BMX for the rest of my life till the day I die. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows, right? I, I just don't know the future. That's part of this too. You never know what the future has in store for you you just never do and that is part of my journey in understanding that and living in the moment there's that i'll be talking about that also on my channel um there's a book i read called the subtle art of not giving an f <laughs> with the asterisks <laughs> really good book look it up if you're interested that's an awesome book because it really teaches you to focus on the things that are important in life and stop focusing on all these things that don't really matter. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, I really do appreciate your support for my channel. Uh, and this content is going to be an addition to all the biking stuff I do, and it will be very well labeled. So if you're interested in it, great. If you're not, just Ignore it and wait till bike content comes out. <laughs> Sweet. Peace. Sweet. I just saw a mom and their child on the front of her bike go by in the window. Bikes rule.